Hey everybody, so I'm back with a new shampoo bar recipe and this one is specifically formulated for those of you with fine hair. And I personally have very fine hair, so I kept myself in mind when making this. So I also wanted to make it like volumizing and sort of moisturizing as well, but not too moisturizing that it's going to weigh down the hair. Alright, so let's take a look at our conditioning phase first. Our conditioning phase consists of two ingredients, Verisoft EQ65 and stearic acid. So first off, Verisoft EQ65 is a cationic conditioning agent for hair care products and emulsions. It is EcoCert and it can improve combability and help detangle the hair. It can increase hair volume and it's less likely to weigh down the hair compared to other conditioning agents. So the reason I chose Verisoft EQ65 for this formula is specifically because it's not supposed to weigh down hair and that's what we're looking for with fine hair because we don't want our hair to be super flat and just blah. You fine hair people know exactly what I'm talking about. So let's move on to stearic acid. This functions as a protective conditioner that helps to leave the hair feeling soft and light. It helps harden the bar and doesn't reduce foam. So we're using this obviously to harden the bar and to help add more moisture to our shampoo bar so our hair can get a little bit of hydration but without really weighing down the hair too much. So we'll be making a total of 200 grams in this recipe, which equals three shampoo bars. So like I said, we're starting with the conditioning phase, and I'm using this heat safe 50 milliliter glass beaker, and I weighed out 10 grams of the Verisoft EQ65. Then I added in six grams of the stearic acid. Now you wanna place this in a water bath and heat it up until everything has melted. And while your conditioning phase is heating up, we can go ahead and work on the liquid phase. So for the liquid phase, I grabbed a 100 milliliter glass beaker. This doesn't need to be heat safe, we won't be heating it up. And I started with the first ingredient, the volumizing complex. So again, us fine hair people know that we need a little bit of life and luster to our hair. So I'm gonna be using this volumizing complex in hopes it adds some like bounce and volume to it because it's supposedly supposed to produce a bouncy curl and increase volume in hair. So this is supposedly good for those of you who have curly hair, so good to note. And I added in four grams of the volumizing complex. Next up, we got some vegakeratin. This is a vegetable alternative to animal keratin. It increases hair strength, enhances elasticity, helps protect hair from harsh salon process, makes hair look more healthy and shiny, and improves combability of hair. So those of you with fine hair, our hair is pretty weak, so some extra keratin won't do any harm. So let's add this in to help strengthen our fine hair. Next up, we have some wheat protein. This constitutes a unique hydrating complex offering a combination of moisture balancing and film forming properties that work synergistically to give hair better body and control. It increases shine and highlights. And I bleach the heck out of my hair, so I need as much hydration as possible, so this should help with that without weighing down the hair completely. And I used four grams of the wheat protein. Next up, we have sodium lactate liquid, and this is a natural humectant and moisturizer, so this will help moisturize your hair, but it will also help harden the shampoo bar. And I added in eight grams of the sodium lactate liquid. So now we're moving on to our preservative, Liquid Dremel Plus. And sorry about my bottle, apparently some water or something got on it and made everything smear. I don't really know what happened. Anyways, all you need is about one gram of the Liquid Dremel Plus to help preserve your product. And then I'm gonna be adding in some lime essential oil, two grams to be exact, because I'm obsessed with the scent of lime. You can use whatever essential oil or fragrance oil you would like. And then lastly, I'm gonna be adding in some foaming apple. Foaming apple is a very mild anionic surfactant that is actually great for dry hair types because it's not really harsh, so it's not really gonna strip your hair. And I added in 20 grams of the foaming apple. So after you have all your liquid ingredients weighed out, go ahead and mix them up just a little bit. And you can go ahead and place that beaker to the side because now we're working on our powder phase. And it's very, 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 very important to make sure you have a respirator for this phase because the powdered surfactants can not be very safe breathing in. You don't want to breathe them in, it'll make you cough, and just things won't go well, guys. Trust me. So make sure you have a respirator for this part. I got mine for like 20 bucks and the powdered surfactant we're gonna be using is SCI. So SCI is a very extra mild anionic surfactant and it's great for really all hair types because it's very mild and gentle. So this is a good go-to powdered surfactant for any hair types. 
and I'm using this 500 milliliter glass beaker to weigh out 137 grams of the SCI. And lastly, I'm going to be using this DL Panthenol. And DL Panthenol has a range of an amazing hair benefits. It's a film former that increases shine while hydrating the hair strand to be more elastic, more manageable, and healthier. And it can even thicken the hair shaft, making hair appear thicker. And I added in 4 grams of the DL Panthenol. So now you can just gently mix the DL Panthenol and the SCI together. Be careful here and make sure you still have on your respirator. And now I'm using this pink mica powder to add a little bit of coloring to the powder face first. You can add however much you want, just don't overdo it. It'll still look really light until we add in the liquids. And once we have the mica powder mixed in, we can go ahead and slowly add in the liquid phase just a little bit at a time, mix it in, add a little bit more, mix it in until you have it all incorporated. And now it's time to grab our conditioning phase that we have heating up over on the stove. Quickly pour that in, mix that in, and there you go. Just go ahead and keep mixing until everything's well incorporated. And this is also the time I switch to a harder, sturdier spoon. Make sure it's not a spoon you're eating with. Make sure it's just strictly used for making skincare products. And if you need to, you might need to let it sit for like 30 minutes to an hour, possibly two hours. If it's still pretty wet, mine actually dried pretty quickly. And you want it to have this type of consistency to it. I like to describe it as like a Play-Doh consistency, but maybe a little bit more dry than Play-Doh. It should be manageable and you should be able to mold it into different shapes. And if you're seeing these little white chunks in here, that's just chunks of the SCI or chunks of the cationic surfactant being the conditioning phase. So it's okay. Once you wet the bar, they will just dissolve right into your hair. And now it's time to press our bars. So I'm using this two and a quarter inch shampoo bar press that I purchased on Etsy. I'll link it down below. You basically just put your shampoo bar formula in the middle of it and press it down that easy. A tip that I like to use is I like to cover the press in parchment paper because these shampoo bars are pretty sticky. So I just wrap the actual pressing parts with parchment paper and I put parchment paper on top of the base. You can also use all these different kinds of molds. There's so many fun molds out there. You can use those if you would like and just pack them into the molds. But I like making just perfectly round little pressed shampoo bars. And I like to make sure I weigh out each bar to make sure they're pretty even. Doesn't need to be exact. Mine were right around 66 grams to like 68 grams. Just right around there. And I sort of like to just play with the shampoo bar a little bit before I add it into the press. Just making sure it's like really manageable. And I like to roll it up in a ball throw it in the press, and then press it down. And there you go. You're greeted with a beautiful shampoo bar. It is kind of hard to press out the first one, but after that, it's a lot easier to pull them out. And this one didn't really turn out perfect at first, but that's okay. I could repress this if I want, but personally, it's not a big deal to me. It's whatevs. It's just gonna be me using this, so it doesn't need to be perfect. But if you really wanna fix up these edges, just run it through the press again and it will be even more beautiful. And there you go, there's the first one. I know it's not perfect, but it's perfect for me. And here we go, pressing the second one. This one actually turned out a lot better because it wasn't as hard to like push out of the press. And then here we are with the third one. And of course, third time's the charm. The third one is definitely the prettiest. Cause like I said, the more and more you go through and press them, it's a lot easier to just get the press through. So after we have them all pressed, I like to just lay them on a paper towel. You can use a tray of some sort if you would like, and then you just wanna put them in the freezer for about an hour or two. And after that, go ahead and take them out and lay them out on your counter for 24 hours. I personally like to let mine sit for about a week or two because they actually get harder the longer they sit. So it's kind of like soap, the longer they sit, the better they are. Especially since we used a lot of liquid ingredients in these shampoo bars, we really wanna let them sit or preferably longer than a day, but if need be, you can definitely use them after 24 hours, because I did, because I wanted to just demonstrate to you guys how to use the shampoo bars. And uh, let's do that now, in case you don't know how to use shampoo bars. So you just wanna grab your shampoo bar, wet down your hair, and I first like to start with just the barrier around my hair. I like to massage it all in around there, and then I work on the actual shaft, and I actually like to rub in the very center of my scalp as well. I only wash my hair about once a week, so when I wash my hair, I like to use a good amount of shampoo and really get a good lather in there. 
So I typically use a lot more product than I guess the average person. But it really is amazing how much these shampoo bars lather. So let me know if you have any questions down in the comments below. Also, let me know what hair type you have so I know what shampoo bars to make next. Now it's time for my Patreon shoutouts. So first up, we have Stardust Bath & Body over on Instagram, Nature's Farm Girl at naturesfarmgirl.com, Kennedy's Essentials at kennedysessentials.net, Let's Blend at letsblend.bigcartel.com, Creative with Love at creativewithlove.me, Wallflower Wildflower at wallflowerwildflower.com, Heartfelt Beauty on YouTube if you want some more formulating videos, Sugared underscore Pineapple over on Instagram, KAJ Bath & Body over on Etsy, Blue Mint Soaps at bluemintsoaps.com, Satara here on YouTube at Salt Air Label over on Instagram, Lenise Beauty at lenisebeauty.com, R Drew Naturals at rdrewnaturals.com, and Shark City at sharkcitynaturals.com, and sharkcitycbd.com. By the way, if you didn't know, I do sell products myself over on Etsy. I'll have my Etsy shop linked down in the description box, and I'll have all my lovely patrons linked in the description box as well. So let me know how you guys like this recipe. Let me know what you would add in your shampoo bars. Also, like I said before, let me know your hair type down in the comments so I know what kind of shampoo bars to make next. Hope to talk to you guys in my next video. Later! I'm